The liquid shown in figure in the two arms are mercury, which has a specific gravity of 13.6, and water. If the heights of the mercury column and water column is as shown, find the height h of the water column. All right, so in one of the arms, we have mercury. In the other arm, we have water. And if we look at the level AB, then there is a mercury column of height 2 centimeter and there is water column of height H. We have to find this height H. All right. So the concept here is that uh, for a liquid which is stationary, which is in equilibrium, for the same liquid at the same point or at the same level, the pressure has to be the same. All right. Which means that the pressure at point A and the pressure at point B has to be the same. So we have to find out the pressure at point A, pressure at point B and equate them. It's as simple as that. Okay, so there will be an atmospheric pressure acting because both the tubes are exposed to the atmosphere. So I'm going to write what is the pressure at point A. The pressure at point A is going to be P0 plus rho of water into G into H. Basically the pressure due to the column of water. This has to be equal to pressure at B which will be P0 plus the density of mercury into G into H. What is H? H is 2 centimeter. Notice that I have not converted this into SI unit because the units are going to be same on both sides and they will get cancelled. So height I am going to get in centimeter itself. All right. So in this particular situation, I need, don't need to convert the units. Okay. So P0 goes away. G goes away, I am left with H is equal to the density of HG divided by the density of water multiplied by 2. Now, density of mercury divided by density of water is basically the specific gravity of mercury, which is 13.6 as supplied in the question. And this multiplied by 2 is going to give me 27.2 centimeter. All right, and that is going to be my answer. If we look at the options, then I have to supply an approximate answer. So naturally option A is going to be my right answer. The question is, find the density of the oil inside the YouTube as shown in the figure. All right, so what is the situation? There is oil in one of the arms and there is water in the other arm, okay? This part over here has air, right? So there is, there is no liquid in that part. So we have to find out what is the density of oil given that this liquid system of liquids is in equilibrium. Okay. Again, what is the concept? For the same liquid at the same point or at the same level, the pressure has to be the same, which tells me that the pressure at point A and the pressure at point B has to be the same because A and B both there is water and they are at the same level and the liquids are in equilibrium. So all I have to do is find out the pressure, equate it and get my answer. That's very simple. Okay. So obviously there will be a pressure, atmospheric pressure acting on both the ends of the tube. Perfect. Now I'm going to write what is the pressure at point A. So what is the pressure of point A? This is going to be P0 plus the pressure due to the column of oil. Okay. Now it's very simple to see that this is going to be 5 centimeter. Okay. So this is going to become the density of oil multiplied by G multiplied by H, which is 5 centimeter. Okay. Now the pressure at point B is going to be P0. Okay. The pressure here is P0. And there is air over here. So basically the pressure at this point is also P0. Okay. Apart from that, what is there? There is a water column of height 2 centimeter. So what will be the pressure due to that? It will be the density of water multiplied by G into H, which is 2 centimeter. All right, P0 gets cancelled. What G gets cancelled? And I'm left with rho of oil is equal to 2 by 5 into the density of water. And how much is that? That is 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube. So I am going to retain that unit over here. Okay, so I'm going to be left with so this is going to become 2 by 5 into 10 into 100. So I'm left with 400 and obviously the unit is going to be kg per meter cube and that is going to be the density of oil. Now let's have a look at the options. So naturally option B is going to be my right option. 
The question is, a hydraulic automobile lift is designed to lift cars with a maximum mass of 300 kg. The area of cross section of the piston carrying the load is 500 cm square. What maximum pressure would smaller piston have to bear? All right, so the situation is that there is a piston over here which is going to carry the weight of the car and this piston has a diameter of, or area of cross section of 500 centimeters square. So obviously it is going to apply a pressure. Now, Pascal's law tells me that in a confined liquid, the pressure is transmitted undiminished. So whatever is going to be the pressure at this point, same is going to be the pressure at this point. So the question is that at A, what is the maximum pressure that this piston will have to bear? And what will be my answer? It will be the same as the pressure at this piston. That is it. So all I need to do is find out the pressure at that piston. And what is that pressure is going to be? That pressure is going to be the force applied there divided by the area. Okay, what will be the force? The force would be equal to the weight of the car, which is M multiplied by G. G given to me is 9.8. And the divided by area, which is 500 centimeter square. So I will have to count, convert that to meter square. So this is going to become into 10 to the power minus 4. Okay, 2 zeros gone from here. This 10 to the power 4 is going to go up. Okay. Now, if I calculate this, this is going to be 3824, 3927, 29.4 divided by 5 into 10 to the power 4. So, if I calculate this, this is going to come out to be 5525, then 44. So, 8 and then 40 and then 8 into 10 to the power 4. And this has to be Pascal. So, that is going to be my answer. Very simple question. Let's have a look at the options. So, option C is going to be my right answer. The question is, a concrete sphere of radius capital R has a spherical cavity of radius small r, which is packed with sawdust. The specific gravities of concrete and sawdust are respectively 2.4 and 0.4. For this sphere to float with its entire volume submerged underwater, a ratio of mass of concrete to the mass of sawdust will be. Alright, so this material is made up of concrete. There is a cavity where sawdust has been filled up and it is informed in the question that it floats with its entire volume submerged. Okay, in this scenario, we have to find out what is the ratio of the mass of the concrete block to the mass of the sawdust. All right. Now, if something is floating, then obviously we have to recall the Archimedes principle, which tells me that the weight of the floating object has to be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. This is Archimedes principle and that is what we are going to apply over here. So first of all, we need to find out what is the weight of the object. Okay, so weight of the object will be composed of the weight of the concrete part plus sawdust. Okay, and what is weight? Mass into gravity and what is mass? It is density into volume. Okay, so can I write that the mass of the concrete part is going to be the density of the concrete part multiplied the volume of the concrete part into gravity that becomes the weight plus the mass of sawdust is going to be the density of the sawdust multiplied by the volume of the sawdust into gravity. So what do I have in the LHS? I have the weight of the object. All right. Now this has to be equal to the weight of liquid displaced. Okay. So first of all, what is the volume of liquid displaced? So this entire volume of this object is the volume displaced because it is completely submerged. Okay. So can I write that this is going to be the volume of the object multiplied by the density of what? The density of water because water is the liquid which is being displaced multiplied by G. All right. This is going to be my equation. Okay. What I see is G gets cancelled from both sides and now I can do the substitution. Okay, so density of concrete is going to be 2.4. The specific gravity is 2.4. That means the density is going to be 2.4 gram per cc. Plus, what is the volume of the concrete? The volume of the concrete is going to be 4 by 3 pi. The whole volume is R cube 
and from there I have to subtract the volume of this inner sphere which would be minus small r cube correct plus the density of s which is sawdust which is going to be 0 0.3 multiplied by the volume which is going to be 4 by 3 pi small r cube now this has to be equal to what this has to be equal to the volume of the object what is the volume of the object the entire volume which is 4 by 3 pi capital r cube multiplied by density of water what is density of water it is 1 gram per centimeter cube and hence we have written our equation so you see a lot of things are going to get cancelled so 4 by 3 pi 4 by 3 pi and 4 by 3 pi are gone and i am left with 2.4 r cube minus 2.4 small r cube plus 0 0.3 small r cube and this is equal to r cube okay so i can take all the r capital r terms to one side and small r terms to one side so i am going to be left with 1.4 r cube should be equal to 2.1 small r cube hence the relationship i have right here is that capital r cube is equal to 21 upon 14 small r cube or i can say this is equal to 3 divided by 2 okay so neatly i'm going to write this expression over here capital r cube is equal to 3 by 2 small r cube that is the relationship we have found out okay now we have to find out what is the mass of what is the ratio of mass of concrete to the ratio of mass of sawdust okay so this that we have written is the mass of concrete and this that we have written is the mass of sawdust all right so we all we have to do is take the ratio of these two quantities all right so let's do that so 2.4 into 2.4 into 4 by 3 pi capital R cube minus small r cube which is mass of concrete divided by 0 0.3 into 4 by 3 pi r cube all right this is the ratio that is required okay 4 by 3 pi goes away here we are going to have 8 okay so this is going to become 8 and then I can divide it by cap small r cube so this is going to become capital R cube upon small r cube minus 1 okay and what did we find out the ratio of capital R cube and small r cube that ratio is 3 by 2 so I am going to substitute it over there so 8 multiplied by 3 by 2 minus 1 is going to give me 8 multiplied by half and that is going to give me four all right so finally i have come to my answer and which is four so if we look at the options the correct option is going to be option b all right pretty interesting question i hope you were able to follow it so the question is two blocks a and b float in a liquid of density rho l as shown the distance l and h are shown after some time block b is kept submerged in the liquid so that l decreases and h increases if density of block b is rho b then find the correct option so we have to find out the relationship between the density of the liquid and the density of block b all right let's analyze the situation so when both the blocks are floating the weight of the displaced liquid due to this part okay this this volume is the displaced volume and the weight due to this displaced volume of liquid will be equal to the weight of both the blocks a and b all right because it is supporting both the blocks perfect now when block b gets submerged inside the water then this volume of the liquid displaced is going to support the weight of block a only there is no block b on top of that which means that now it has to support a lower weight hence the liquid the volume of liquid displaced will also be lower okay so which means l prime is going to be less than l all right that is pretty obvious and that is pretty simple to figure out so that is the explanation of the first part now the explanation that we need here is that 
why does this h prime increase okay it is given in the question so we need to figure out the reason that this h prime increases all right so let's analyze that now when both the blocks are floating okay i'm just thinking about what is block b doing okay if only block a is there some part of the block is submerged but if we put a block b on top of it then a larger part of block a is submerged okay we get that now since block b is floating it means that block b is going to displace the weight of the liquid equal to its own weight that is the archimedes principle it is floating all right so can we say that the weight of the liquid displaced and that will be the volume of the liquid displaced multiplied by the density of the liquid displaced multiplied by g this is the weight of the dis liquid displaced should be equal to the weight of block b because it is floating all right so weight of block b means volume of block b into density of block b into the gravity okay g gets cancelled and what i get from here is that the volume of liquid displaced in the initial condition is going to be vb into rho b upon rho l all right is that correct so this in the initial condition this is the volume of the liquid displaced by b only we are only talking about what block b is doing now block b is completely submerged inside the water so what is the volume of liquid it is going to displace the volume of liquid it is going to displace is going to be its volume so vl prime is going to be simply equal to vb all right now what we know here is that the volume of liquid displaced after block b is submerged is greater so vl prime is greater than vl because the height h prime increases that is only possible when now more liquid is being displaced is that correct so vl prime has to be greater than vl so what is vl prime vl prime is vb this has to be greater than vb vl which is vb multiplied by rho b divided by rho l and rho b gets cancelled and what i have now is rho l is greater than rho b all right so in this condition rho l has to be greater than rho b and that is going to be my answer all right if we take a look at the options then option b is going to be my correct option